The Canon R5C has been the camera that many Canon fans have been waiting for with its unlimited record times and built-in cooling fan. However, with a Seaf Express card slot and an SD card slot, it might be worth knowing what modes work with each card as well as the little tweaks that this camera has when you use each of the cards. So let's get into this video. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Sabrent we love to make and talk tech. So if that's what you're into then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. The Canon R5C is the camera that the R5 really should have been as it solves the biggest issue with the R5 which was overheating. It's also got some options that the R5 just doesn't have and one feature that I kind of wish the R5C kind of kept. The R5C can record audio with 120p clips, has dual base ISO of 800 and 3200, and the 8K RAW recording mode now supports 50 and 60p frame rates, albeit you do have to use a USB-C PD charger to use those modes. There are also tele lights all over this thing, making it fit really nicely in with the rest of the Canon Cinema lineup. Not only does this indicate when you are recording, but it also flashes when any of your cards or battery are running low, giving you a handy feedback when in front of or behind the camera. I've been able to record using the Canon R5C in all of its modes for as long as I wanted thanks to its built-in cooling fan, which means no longer having to use an external recorder to use the camera for basically more than 10 minutes in high frame rate modes. There are different fan modes changing the speed of the fan, which in turn changes the cooling performance. I found that in normal 4K recording modes with the fan speed set to low, there are no issues with overheating and the noise of the fan can barely be heard, which is very good because there's actually no way of turning it off. Testing this in hotter conditions, medium or high fan settings will be needed to keep this camera cool or if you intend on recording 8K raw video. The high fan speed mode may be picked up by a microphone, so be aware that you're not placing the microphone too close to the camera. Now, because it has a fan, I was a little bit worried that we may not get the same weather ceiling as the R5, but Canon does claim that it's got a similar level of weather ceiling from dust and water. We'll have to take Canon's word on that because I'm not going to run those tests on this particular model. Now being a cinema camera, you may think it falls short on photography, but it definitely doesn't. The images look incredible whether you shoot in JPEGs, RAW, or even Canon's own C-RAW. It's got that kind of Canon color that many of us loved over the years from Canon and this has it in spades. At the top of the camera you have this little dial which separates the photo and video modes. Switching between the two isn't the fastest taking around six seconds to switch but that's because it switches the menu options completely. For photography you have the classic photo menus from Canon cameras but when you switch to the video mode, well, you're actually getting the menus from their cinema lineup. This does mean that you do have to learn two different menus, but honestly, Canon makes this super simple to change the settings. That being said though, things like Animal Eye Detect isn't available for the video mode as it's actually not part of their cinema OS yet. What's also not part of the cinema line is the camera optical stabilization, which many cinematographers actually prefer, but for quick run and gun shooting or shooting with non-stabilized lenses, I honestly miss this feature. Canon says they removed it to reduce the heat generation and that most Canon R5C owners would probably disable it in favor of a gimbal but with a lot of online creators nowadays the fact that it doesn't have this feature means that it has dismissed this camera from their shopping list but honestly they really shouldn't the image quality is amazing it's got one of the nicest 4k 120 footage i've ever seen whether you use it in c-log3 for creative control or using the default color profile for fast turnaround c-log3 for those who don't know is canon's flat profile that provides the most color and dynamic range information moving to the ports you have the standard mic and headphone jacks as well as the timecode port which is nice to see in a cinema camera. One thing that was really surprising to see was that micro HDMI port for a cinema camera. Normally you only see full size HDMI or even SDI ports on a cinema camera as micro HDMI ports are 
just less durable than those other two options. On the hand grip, you have two media formats, a UHS-2 card slot and a CF Express Type-B card slot. Both cards can be used for both video and photo modes, but there are some differences in what you can record in each card, which actually leads me perfectly onto the recording modes. On the first page of recording slash media setup, you can set three different sensor modes, full frame for up to 8K recording, super 35 crop mode, which supports up to 4K recording, and super 16 millimeter crop mode, which supports up to 1080p. Then the R5C can be rebooted into three system frequencies, 24 Hertz for 24p, 50 Hertz for 25 and 50p, and 49.94 Hertz, allowing for 23.98, 29.97, or 59.94p frame rates. After all that, you have a few recording modes. Internal RAW is available in both light and standard options, or HQ if the frame size is set to Super 35. You've also got RAW over HDMI, Canon's own XFAVC for up to 4K in 422 10-bit, and lastly, you have MP4, which is available in 8-bit H.264, or 10-bit HEVC up to 422. When you select RAW, you can't select different resolutions as RAW can only record at the full resolution of the sensor format. So that's 8K DCI in full frame mode or 5.9K in Super 35 mode or 2.9K in Super 16. In all the other recording modes, you can change the different recording resolutions. In the recording slash media setup on the second page, you have two main recording modes in the recording modes menu, normal recording and slow and fast motion. The former, as the name suggests, is all of the normal recording frame rates and the latter is used for stop motion, hyperlapses or for slow motion up to 120 frames per second. If you select this option, you'll see a second option below it for your slow and fast frame rates. You can then select a frame rate from one per second all the way up to 120 per second, depending on the mode that you selected in the first page. It will then let you record at that frame rate and then slow it down or speed it up at that selected frame rate that you've selected on the first page. As mentioned earlier, you have two cards that you can record to, which can be set in the menus. We have pretty much tested all of the recording modes on the Canon R5C using the SD card and CF Express card slots. We used our Sabrin V90 UHS-2 card and the Sabrin CF Express Type-B card. Both cards feature incredible speeds and specs that make it reliable and stable for any professional workflow. The Sabrin V90 SD cards are available in 64, 128, 256 and 512 gigabyte sizes and the CF Express card is available in 512 gigabyte and one terabyte sizes. I've come up with a comprehensive list, probably the most in-depth list from any manufacturer from almost all of the photo and video modes on the Canon R5C for both our Sabrin V90 card and the Sabrin CF Express card. Now look, this took me a long time to come up with, so please hit that subscribe button and that like button so that this content can keep on coming. We'll be publishing this list on our website, which I'll also be putting a link in the description once it is on there. Now, I won't go through all of the formats in this video that I've put in that list, but I will be highlighting some of the main formats that you'll most likely be interested in, as well as compare some of the differences when using SD card and CF Express cards. These were really interesting. Firstly, photography. All of the modes in photography mode work with both the V90 and CF Express card, but there is one thing to note. Clearing the buffer from the CF Express card was much faster than using the SD card, and you are able to actually take more shots before the buffer hits. So if you are interested in sports photography or wildlife photography, then the CF Express card option might be best for you. When it comes to video, you get access to all the raw modes and all the settings using the CF Express card. This includes 8K raw at 60 and 50p, but be aware that the 512 gigabyte CF Express card can't do 8K raw light at 60p, so 
opt for the one terabyte model if you want to use this mode. To be honest, you will want the one terabyte card anyway if you want to record in this format, as you're only getting 52 minutes of record time due to the 2570 megabits per second data rate. Yeah. That's a lot of data per second. Even at 8K RAW LT at 50p, it's 2140 megabits per second, which will give you 31 minutes with the 512 gigabyte CF Express card and 63 minutes with the one terabyte card. The other 8K RAW modes in full frame record in at least 1000 megabits per second, and all the CF Express cards from Sabrin handle it great, and I saw no issues with hours and hours of testing here in my studio, as well as in our testing office. When it comes to Super 35 mode, you can record 5.9K RAW HQ in 24, 25 and 30p, which is the highest quality RAW mode on this camera. But again, you will need a CF Express card for this as all the data rates are above 1000 megabits per second. But don't feel down if you have our V90 card, as this camera can actually shoot 5.9K RAW light in Super 35 at 23.98p, 24 or 25p with a whopping 560 megabits per second on average, depending on obviously what frame rate you choose. Here, I would recommend getting at least the Sabrent V90 256 gigabyte SD card if you want to record at least an hour of footage on your card, but also save you time from swapping out cards all the time or just carrying less cards in general. If we take a look at the 4K modes in XFAVC IntraFrame at 24 or 25p, you'll be able to record with both the V90 card and CF Express card as both cards can handle the 410 megabits per second data rate. Using the smallest card at 64 gigabytes, you will just get 20 minutes of record time. So again, if you want at least an hour of footage, then I would recommend at least the 256 gigabyte model. Please note that if you want to record in 60 or 50p in this mode, then you will need to use the CF Express card to handle the 810 megabit per second speeds. This will give you around 83 minutes with the 512 gigabyte CF Express card or 168 minutes with the one terabyte CF Express card. Now let's look at the slow and fast mode as if you want to shoot some of that creamy smooth b-roll then the 4k 120p is probably on the top of your list now you may be glad to know that you are able to record 4k 120p using a v90 sd card as long as you select the long gop option this isn't as good as the intra frame option where you get a lot more information per frame of video so if that's what you're looking for then best grab the CF Express card instead. What's really interesting is there's actually a difference in bitrate when using the CF Express card and SD card slot when shooting long GOP 4K at 120p or below, despite me setting everything exactly the same. It looks like when you select SD card as a recording option in the Canon R5C, it will actually lower the bitrate. So when you use an SD card in this mode at 120 frames per second, what you actually see is that the megabits per second is only 108 megabits per second. And when you set it to 96p, then it's 130 megabits per second, which both modes are actually lower than when using the CF Express card, where you get 160 megabits per second in all of the frame rates. So at 120 FPS, you actually get a massive drop in data rates compared to using a CF Express card. Moving on, if you want to shoot in intra frame instead of long GOP for higher quality footage, you will need a CF Express card, which will boost the data rate from 160 megabits per second to 410 megabits per second. Now you might be asking, hold on a second, 410 megabits per second is still within the scope of a V90 card recording, right? So 
why doesn't it work? Well, that's because the camera is writing at a much higher data rate, which is then converted to the 110 megabits per second 4K intra footage. As you can imagine, the data that needs to be written from an 8K sensor to then be downsampled to 4K at 120 frames per second, and then to be slowed down in camera for your selected frame rate is a lot. So even though 410 megabits per second data rate is the normal frame rate that you can record in an SD card. When you are using this fast and slow mode, you are actually writing more data to the card for the camera to then use with its clear magic to make that slow motion clip happen. This actually also goes for 1080p all intra frame at XFAVC when recording between the slow and fast frame rate of 72 to 120p for the recording frame rates between 24 and 60p. So even though at 24 or 25p the data rate is only 160 megabits per second and at 50 and 60p is only 310 megabits per second, again because of how the camera still has to write all of that data at higher frame rates, it's still not enough for the V90 card to hit. Luckily, you will get a warning message from the Canon camera to let you know that you will need a CF Express card to record in the selected modes, which is good. But I think this is why we do these tests because we wanted to make sure that you chose the right card for your chosen recording modes. Also, if you want slow and fast at 4K intra frame at 50 or 60p, then you will need a CF Express card. With a 512 gigabyte card, you will get 83 minutes of recording, or with the one terabyte card, you'll get 168 minutes of recording. Apart from these modes, a V90 card will be able to record all other slow and fast recording modes, so you could get away with it. But again, if you want the best quality slow motion at the cost of obviously larger file sizes, then grab the CF Express card. One other thing to point out outside of compatibility is actually capacity. Our Sabrin V90 SD card is one of the largest V90 SD cards you can buy right now, and that is available up to 512 gigabytes, whereas our CF Express card type B can actually go all the way up to one terabyte, providing you up to twice as much storage. This can be very important for many professionals who do documentary work or wedding videography, where you don't want to think about your recording times or anything like that and have to worry about switching cards out because you might want to record something for 30 minutes but let's say you only have 20 minutes left on the card that's going to be an absolute nightmare in a run and gun situation one thing i haven't spoken about yet is the fact that you can do double slot recording there are a couple of different ways that you can configure this depending on what recording modes you have selected so if you want to have a dual recording whereby you can record the same footage on both cards then this is possible as long as the sd card is rated for that particular recording recording mode. If you want to record in a mode that isn't compatible with the SD card, then you can record a proxy or a sub recording at a lower bitrate, which can be useful as either a lower quality backup or as a proxy. Proxies that can be recorded when you are creating those clips are powerful as if you are someone who doesn't have a system that is able to edit those high quality recordings or if you need to send a project to someone and you've got those large project files, a proxy allows for better editing experience and also allows for faster and easier collaboration when sending those clips. Now yes, you can create those files on your computer, but even with a fast computer like my custom PC or even my Apple Silicon laptops, they can take hours depending on the amount of footage you have. So being able to have it done instantly and it only taking a couple of minutes to link those footage in post, then I mean, that just makes workflows so much easier. This also leads me on to transferring files. CF Express cards are faster than SD cards. When comparing our CF Express card to our V90 SD card, I mean, both of them are very fast, but the CF Express card can transfer it two to three times faster. And 
I mean, that is something that you should consider when choosing your card for your professional workload. So yes, both cards can be used with the Canon R5C and you will get amazing footage by using either. Here at Sabrin, we have provided incredible options to give you fast and reliable cards for any shoot. The best option would actually be for you to get both cards to give you all of the benefits that I've spoken about to give you that level of redundancy and obviously recording options. As mentioned before, we will be publishing these tables so that you can see all of the results that I've taken. And I'll also leave links to all of the cards that I've mentioned in the description down below for you guys to grab. Anyway, I really, really hope that you found this video helpful and interesting. And if you did, then please make sure to smash that like button and leave a comment down below. Also hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.